Hey y'all, Coach and Friday, hey guys, today's with Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about, in particularly, to the Gentiles. Okay. That's why the title of this class will be, What okay. Gentiles Must Do in Order to See the Kingdom of Heaven. From the church perspective, what do you remember them saying as far as how Gentiles or what they had to do in order to go to heaven mm -hmm. uh, and or the kingdom of heaven, which, you know, of course, is two different things. Uh, just believe in God. Okay. Believe in the most high and um, in Jesus. Yeah. And so that's what will get you to heaven. Believing in God will take you to heaven is what we learned in church is what you're saying. I believe so. Uh, and I agree. That's, and it's actually true. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul was trying to do. That's the difference between Paul and Peter is he was coming in telling the Gentiles to believe mm -hmm. in our father, Abba. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, we all get to go to heaven. Right. Because that's what's necessary. Because what we learn is that when we die, there will be a voice that will call our name. And as long as we recognize that voice, who will be? our father mm -hmm. we, and we go to that voice then we're in what we know is heaven right. but if we don't recognize that voice then if you go the opposite way yeah you're not his and well you actually end up in a place of darkness and confusion right. opposed to going to him where the light is right you go in what we're taught is hell right but what about the kingdom of heaven which the Messiah told us back a long time ago that it was at hand. It ain't in some place when you die or in the future or whatever. He said it's here right now when he says it's at hand. You know, that's not very, that's not talked about. Um, I don't know if there's a separation um, between the kingdom of heaven and uh, the beyond heaven that we think about. Um, we're just, or if they're put together, it's just one place. Yeah. Well, it's because... When you're talking to Gentiles, the kingdom of heaven has never really been an option for them. Mm. If you remember how we were taught in church, the Christians go away. Mm -hmm. And the so-called Israelites have to stay in, on the earth. Mm -hmm. Right? So that plan was never to see this part. That plan was to go away and return. If you remember the story, they return with the Messiah. Right. Okay. Well, that's after the kingdom has already been established. Mm -hmm. It is the people who have to go through the tribulation, the ones that live, that will have to put things back together, this perfect planet that we've been promised. Mm -hmm. They'll have, you know, so much time to put this back together. And then those believers who have gone on and are now returning back will return back to the kingdom of heaven. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. And that's true, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what if you don't want to die? Right. What if you want to live? What if you want to take this current body? Not the, not, You don't necessarily want to have a glorified body because we're told that our bodies will start to rejuven, rejuvenate over time. You know, in the, in the kingdom of heaven, when things start to get better, our bodies will start to repair themselves. Right. So what if you want to, what if you're happy with what you got? And you're like, you know what? Because you got to understand the promises of those who survive these things. Mm -hmm. The multitude that no man can number will be like the new Noah's. Everybody will always remember them. Mm -hmm. They will always, like for instance, if you were to live, they will always remember Grandma Stacy. Right. If it wasn't for Grandma Stacy, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't know if we were ever presented with that being an option. In the church. Yeah. The and church. so that's why we're doing this class to say what is the other option? What if you do not plan to go away in this extinction level event coming up? Okay. What do they have to do? Now, one of the things you brought out over here early, I wanted to mention, you said that they have a different set of rules. Right. Here are their rules. These are Gentile rules. Okay. The, this is what you want to read it because this is what Paul was telling them. We're here in chapter 21 of the book of Acts. Acts 21 and 17. 
And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the others were present. Mm -hmm. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Yeah, because you got to remember that Paul was the Gentile teacher. Yeah. People get confused, especially people who are struggling with these commandments. They mm -hmm. struggle with Paul because Paul was like, you can do almost anything. Yeah. That's because Paul, who was a Hebrew, mm -hmm. and he self-proclaiming, adhering to the law. Mm -hmm. He's a, he was a lot zealous. A little bit. He was zealous mm -hmm. of the law. His job was to teach Gentiles. Right. And so he had a different message. Yeah. he, The message that he grew up with was different than the message that he taught. Absolutely. Yeah. And the message that he lived. Yeah. You yeah. remember that? Yeah. Okay. That was, that, was, that was needed to be said. And the message that he lived. Because he, he lived as a Hebrew. Because right. that's what he was. He didn't, you know, he told them that they had a different set of rules. Yet and still he followed the same rules as the Messiah, right. Moses, and those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he was and so you think about his mission his job was to come in as the fisherman to get all of the Gentiles and basically get them in a position now where they can actually go to heaven too because if they never learned about God mm -hmm. they would have you know never had the opportunity to have the opportunity at all yeah. you think of the people who don't know yeah. our father in heaven what chance do they really have when this goes down? Mm -hmm. And so that's Paul's mission. Mm -hmm. And that's why Israelites got to be careful when we read the 13 books of Paul because his message is to Gentiles, not Israelites. You know, and a lot of times we say, well, the Bible is for everybody. Well, it is, but there's different messages for different people. But we can learn from them, you know. It, it, it says the Word of God, all the inspired Word is good for instructions and wisdom and and discipline and all that other stuff, but yet it's still some of the messages were were, were particular just for that yeah. set of people. Yeah, but one of my favorite books in the whole Bible is the Book of Romans. Yeah, yeah, I know you said that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and but think about it. There's the Book of the Hebrews too. Mm -hmm. I'm a Hebrew. I'm not a Roman. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's messages in there for everybody, and. Right now, we're, you want to go on to the uh, next verse? Verse 20. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Zealous, jealous. The word jealous and zealous is the same. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Both, and it, because it's talking about, you know, how Yahweh is a jealous God. Mm hmm and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. He talking to Jews about what he was taught to teach the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So he's like, y'all, you teaching us backwards. That's, that's the problem with Paul, is what we were just saying. You have to be careful. So let's see. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Yeah, what? so what are you saying? Mm -hmm. Are you saying that we're supposed to start breaking the law? And, mm -hmm. you know? Do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them. Okay, four men who have a vow, a vow to Nazarite? Take them and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their head, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. You can keep the law, or you can do what the law says. 25. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. So now, it's saying that as touching the Gentiles, we believe and have written. So these are the same people that just told him to go to the four men that have the vow, right? Mm -hmm. But as it comes to the Gentiles, what we believe, and even have written down and concluded, that they observe no such thing.
the gist of what we're trying to say here is verse 25 where it talks about the differences between the Gentiles and the Israelites right and we see that with all of the rules mm -hmm. that the Israelites would have to follow if they want to see the kingdom of heaven which is important mm -hmm. when it comes to the Gentiles who really only know about going to heaven mm -hmm. these are the rules that they would do in order to get there right and you look at these idols yes blood mm -hmm. things strangled and fornication yeah mm -hmm. and so that's it for them yeah it's different so i didn't even the ten commandments yeah so a lot of the punishments i guess i'll say that israel received because um of the list of rules they have mm -hmm. yeah. the gentiles will not that's because they want to go to the kingdom of heaven Mm -hmm. So that so yeah they and and so they're saying I want to be in here. It's like trying out for the team. There's a thousand people in the school, but who's out there doing push-ups? Yeah. Who's out there running laps? Mm -hmm. Who who's showing up to practice? The only people coming to practice are the people who actually plan to play on the field come game time. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who will be in the kingdom of heaven. The people in the stands will be those in heaven. Watching from above, mm -hmm. not able to participate that much, except through, you know, certain interactions. They can yell real loud and motivate the team. They can throw cups. They can do a lot of stuff, but they won't be able to score touchdowns or make the play mm -hmm. because they're not on the field. Right. So what does the Gentile who actually wants to be on the field do? <laughs> See, that's why we're doing this class. Yeah. What, what does he do? The only option that you've been given so far, Mrs. or Mr. Gentile, is that you'll die and go to heaven. Okay, what if you want to live through this apocalypse mm -hmm. and see all of this beautiful place that our Father promises, not as a new creation, not as a new person, but as like the new Noah's. You want to actually live through the flood. Mm -hmm. And so now you should be wondering, where is our ark? Yeah. Because there was billions of people, if you think about it. They didn't have birth control. They didn't have televisions. They didn't have anything much else to do but create kids. And they created them 10 and 12 at a time. Mm -hmm. So if you got all of these generations from Adam to Noah popping out 10 and 12 kids for a family. Yeah. There was at least 10 billion people on the planet when the flood occurred. Mm-hmm. But the only ones that survived were in a boat, in an ark. Right. And so here we are now about to go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so, like we said, where is the ark? So let's look at the verses here. Now, we're looking here at the third testament of the Bible. Yeah. You want to tell them about it? It's the scripture that introduces us into the third era, mm -hmm. the spirit and truth. So. Now that's it. The, the scripture that introduces us into the third era. When Moses came, people were pretty much like animals. Except for the Egyptians, of course, but that's even worse. Because they had taken on so much of the Egyptian culture that they had to have Moses to come in and give them a document to teach them how to live like humans. Mm -hmm. Don't steal, don't kill, don't mm -hmm. mess with nobody. Don't be like, you know, yeah. be a human. Yeah. Okay, so we had about 1,400 years for Moses to learn how to live like humans, you know, without stealing or killing. Then came the Messiah who said, okay, well, what about loving each other? Mm -hmm. Which was different. Yeah. You know, actually, it's one thing not to come over and harm you. Okay, but am I going to come over and help you? Yeah. And that's what the Messiah came. And, and so then we had 2,000 years of living under this love era where we have to where we actually have to learn how to love one another yeah. you see some people are still struggling with that even to this day mm -hmm. and so now that we're two thousand years later and getting ready to go into the new era the kingdom of heaven that we're talking about right this they you know the post-apocalyptic world where all evil has gone away and humanity is is rejuvenating itself we need a new document mm -hmm. that tells us how to live in this era yeah and it's it's not and 
the significant and like Stacy says, it is the third. What did she say? And the thing about it, this is the third part of the trilogy. Which doesn't cancel out one and two. Absolutely. It's just and more information. More information where right. we didn't need mm -hmm. this information before. It may have even gotten us in trouble. Yeah, I would say so. If you know all of this spirituality stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, look at what happened to those who tried to find it on their own. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can imagine if we had books about it in many years. We were even told, and you know, not to try to go that direction because the father knew we wasn't ready. Right, not ready. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're still not. Yeah. Not really. Not into this pole shift, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, there are those who are getting getting prepared. Yeah. Because this, this pole shift, this earthquake are real stuff. So we have to have a way of surviving. For those who actually want to see the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. All right. So just a little bit of background on the book. This is the third testament of the Bible. I'm over here at Jesus comes or Jesus hyphen comes dot com. Looking at a PDF. You can also mm -hmm. um, buy it online. Just look for third testament by T.R. Ross. There's yeah. some links in the description. Mm -hmm. And we may even look in the great book of true life if this goes as planned. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at verse 15. We'll take it slow and let's go. The day the water ceased to cover the earth, I caused the rainbow of peace to shine in the heavens as a sign of the pact God had established with men. This is talking about how the old flood, the living parable, mm -hmm. is the same as what we're going through now. Mm -hmm. I tell you now, you humanity of the third era, that you are the same ones who passed through those ordeals in which you were purified. You are soon to experience new chaos. Yeah, so it's like we have to go through this in order to get us to these next levels. Mm -hmm. Because even back there with Moses, there was a lot going on in the world. That's yeah. why they were in the desert for 40 years. Mm -hmm. To be protected from what was going on in the rest of the world. Yeah, he actually sent them different routes so that they wouldn't become fearful and turn around. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then you had the earthquake in the book of Joshua. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's mm -hmm. was a pole shift. That's what we're expecting now. That's why you have that example where you have the walls of Jericho falling down. There will be the walls of Babylon this time, mm -hmm. but they're all going to fall similar. Mm -hmm. So you have these living parables to go by. Each time is to purify us of all that our wrong do doings mm -hmm. and put us in a state, a brand new state, mind you. Mm -hmm. You know, just like you was in the kingdom of a new slate. This only happened so many thousands of years mm -hmm. that you get this new slate and then you're able to go to the next level and for us the next level is this kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. we're supposed to be able to speak telepathically mm -hmm. we're supposed to be able to summon angels mm -hmm. we're supposed to be able to speak to the spirit world you know people you know that are deceased mm -hmm. and actually hear back and talk to them you know right. mm -hmm. all of this is supposed to change talking to animals mm -hmm. all the stuff that we we hear about and um, with we are told that well with the, we think it's on another level but mm -hmm. this is stuff that we are about to start experiencing yeah and maybe we think it's on another level because we weren't ever taught that we had as Gentiles mm -hmm. had the option to see any of this except when we be reborn you know come back mm -hmm. you know but who wants to do that right. right I'm sure there's some that you know they may be feeling a little old but remember we're supposed to grow young again yeah. People will start, the, the prophecies are that people will start to live for hundreds and hundreds of years like they did before the pole shift that had happened back in Noah's time. Right. That was a pole shift too. 17. But I come to prevent the people instructed by me and humanity in general to whom I have made myself known in this time. Listen, my children, here is the ark. Enter, I invite you. The people instructed by me and humanity in general this israel and gentiles yeah mm -hmm. so you have those that are following but remember he's here for everybody he wants mm -hmm. everybody to survive mm -hmm. it's just that not everybody's going to do what he's going to follow the instructions mm -hmm. you got a choice so you have those that are following the instructions and everybody else right to whom i have made myself known so these are the people who already know about him yeah. know that he's coming mm -hmm. but again it's gentiles and israelites yeah Listen, my children, here is the ark. Enter, I invite you. Right. And so that's what this class is about. Mm -hmm. How do we get into this ark? Yeah. How do we survive? Mm -hmm. And notice he's talking to everybody. Right. 
Let's go to verse 18. For you, Israel, the ark is the practice of my law, and all who fulfill my commandments in the most perilous and bitter days will find themselves within the ark, strong and feeling protected by the mantle of my love. So, now we're not really talking to these people. No, this is a class for the Gentiles. Right. But we're understanding the ark. You have to understand what the ark is. And he's saying, for you, O Israel, the ones who have been following these instructions, the ones who, you know, are the first fruits, you know, you call them. He's saying, for you, the ark is the law. Mm -hmm. But notice down here for the Gentiles, in the next verse, he says it's something different. Verse 19. And to all this humanity, I say again, the ark is my law of love. All who practice love and charity with their fellow man and with themselves will be saved. So here is the law for the Gentiles. Mm. So you compare these two verses to understand how it is that we get in or on the ark. So the ark, just like before, it was a wooden boat, but it protected them from all of the waves and the rain and all the hurt and you know, all of the storms and the wind and everything that went on. So we're expecting the same thing. It's going to be a different kind of storm, a different kind of wind, but we're going to be inside the ark when we obey the law. It mm -hmm. says up there in verse 18. Mm -hmm. But those in verse 19, it doesn't say they're going to be warm and protected, but that's okay because they're going anyway. Right. What this is saying is that those who are in the law will be in the ark. But what about these other guys who are not in the law, the Gentiles? It's saying that the law is love. Mm -hmm. And by practicing love, they will get to be what we would call on the ark. Yeah. You say, well, what's the difference? They will still be battered by the waves. They will still be bashed by the, the, the hurricanes. But you can imagine back there with Noah, how many people would have been glad to been on top of that ark. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because they don't know the law that well. And so when it comes to, you know, certain things that will happen, they'll make mistakes. And then them hurricane winds will bash them. Mm -hmm. It's because they haven't necessarily followed the instructions. And so they don't know the rules. And so some of them, many of them, most of them are probably on the ark reading the Bible and talking to each other. <laughs> you know, we ain't supposed to do that, right? <laughs> They'd be knocking. Hey, what, what, what are we supposed to do about this verse? <laughs> Somebody will holler back up. Supposed to keep the Sabbath day. Okay. <laughs> if we keep the Sabbath day, can we come in there? <laughs> but how do you get there? How do you even get the opportunity to ride this boat? Right. What it's telling us here is the law of love. So, and all of this lead up, guys, what we've never been told. As far as Gentiles, first of all, that we have the option to see the kingdom of heaven, what it is. And we were never told how to get there. But what we learn here is that we get there through love. And charity. Charity. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the person who now find themselves being known, the fathers made themselves known to them here in 2024, 2025. They don't have time to learn the law necessarily. They can go read it, but it takes years to, of yeah. practice yeah. and experience to know the law. Yeah. You even got to go. Test. Yeah, and test. I was going to say that. You have to go through trials mm -hmm. and fail mm -hmm. just to learn what happens when you do. Yep. That's all part of it. It's like school. And so they don't have that much time. So what do they do? Love and charity. They start dumping charity. Start mm -hmm. giving. Just like the Messiah said, you got two coats, you give one away. Mm -hmm. And that's how they get in the ark. So the person now who find themselves in this position saying, I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to see all it is. I, I live in America. This is the promised land too. I want to be, I want to live. Mm. But mm. I don't know where my Bible's at right now. I ain't seen it in a while. Right. I don't know what the law is when I get in there. Is it the whole Torah or is it just Exodus chapter 21, 22, 23 and chapter 24? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, you know, mm. what do I do? You well, start practicing. Start practicing charity. Mm. Start practicing charity. And that's how we get rid of these things is through charity. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I may not remember all of the things that I've done that I'm guilty of. If I do charity, that offsets the things, especially those things that I've forgotten about. Or that don't I, even know you did. Or didn't even know I did. It makes an offset. Mm -hmm. So for the Gentile now finding themselves wondering what it is that they're supposed to be doing to see the kingdom of heaven, they need to be making offerings. 
All right, now let's come over here and let's look at the Great Book of True Life. This is teaching 302, uh, verse 17, 18, and 19. Yeah, these are these numbers you see at the bottom of this section. Mm -hmm. That's what it means by it's a compendulum is because these verses were actually taken out of the greater work. But as you can see, it was really only two verses. 17 and 18. So if we come over to the Great Book of True Life and look in volume 10, we can see if there was anything else said. First of all, we see the word instead of prevent, it was forewarn. And there in 18, which is so much clearer um, than um, the translation of the Third Testament, it says, Israel, to enter my ark, you need to practice my law. And then in 19 says to all humanity, each individual who practice love and charity with his brethren and with himself will be saved. So it's definitely telling us that we have to practice love and practice charity. Yeah, and then notice it goes on. I will bless that virtue and mankind will discover spirituality like the ark of salvation through that great virtue during the third era. And that's the virtue of giving. Charity. Giving charity, yeah. Yeah, we hear about the virtues over in the Shepherd of Hermits. Mm -hmm. There are 12 of them. Yes. Patience, power, continence, faith. Charity. Look how much more this is bringing out here. This is why it's necessary to... to um, have or be able to have access to this great book of true life mm -hmm. because this makes it even more important when it's talking about charity. It says, not only will man discover salvation for his life on earth, but also salvation and peace for his spirit because a great period of great ordeals is approaching, a time when set will battle set and religion will battle religion. Yeah. And he's saying that the way to get through this is through charity. Yeah. Through the virtue of charity. Mm -hmm. So you got to give, give, give. Yeah. And then give. <laughs> and then give. But one of the good things, um, you know, for us who say, well, what about me? Is that he does, does include yourself. You know, he says, um, who practices love and charity with his brethren and with himself. That's a great point because what he's talking about is your family. Yeah. We forget them many times. What would that look like? Well, you would give your 10% to... Him, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That will be your tithes. Mm -hmm. But then your offerings, what it would look like, from what I understand, look like banquets and feast days and parties. It's where you take in some of your extra resources and instead of them keeping them in the bank for a rainy day, you're actually putting it onto your family. You're, you're, you're using it to uplift our Father's name through your family. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you got to give, give, and more give. So you're giving to everybody. Mm hmm and speaking of giving coach i just want to say thank you all so much for giving to the coach in the fight youtube ministry thank you all for showing up for the videos thank you all for your encouragement thank you all for your prayers thank you all for your offerings of support thank you all for listening thank you all for the comments thank you all for standing in the gap for this ministry when we first started this walk, I had no idea that so many parts of me would be tested. I didn't have no idea that there would be doubts, there would be regrets, there would be uh, lack, there would be days when I was called to be humble when I didn't want to be, there were days when I was called to live in simplicity when I did not want to. Here's a story. Here's a, here's a true story. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, yesterday, I was making a request to the Most High. I said, Most High, the car insurance is due. Um, the internet got to be paid. The pantry is lacking. Um, the tags for the year got to be paid in a couple of days. I was like, and Coach act like, you know, ain't nothing going on. I was like, I don't know what to do. Am I supposed to be doing something? Only thing I know to do is just make a request to you. And unbeknownst to me, at the exact time, because we went back and we looked at the time, at the exact time that I was making that request, the Most High was using one of our subscribers to send a blessing to our family 
I remember saying, okay, most high, the internet is like 70 some dollars. And if we just get the staples and all I need most high is like 300 and some dollars. <laughs> and I remember a couple of hours later, maybe about four or five hours later, you came to me and you said, here, look at this. And I was like, say it to myself, like, wow. Thank y'all so much for standing in the gap for our family. Thank y'all for being that anchor that the Most High uses to support this ministry. So if you've gotten anything out of this video, if you would, go ahead and hit the like button. Right. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Yeah, and then you can receive um, links to how to get the full 12 version of the Great Book of True Life. If you stop by coachingafight.shop, um, you'll see that along with other free downloads. Yep, that's right. And I would suggest that you download these documents because we don't know what's going to happen to the Internet and all of that. And we could lose some of this. So we need to have these books um, when the lights go out. Also, to mention that you can also get your um, Celestial Clock Calendar there and have it in time for the upcoming feast days. Yeah, that's important. The memorial blowing the trumpets right around the time of the eclipse will be the time when we'll start recalibrating them for the seasonal day. And so, yeah, Stacey's right. Now will be a good time to place your order for the Celestial Clock Calendar. But with that, we're going to go ahead and close this video out. Um, be sure to leave us a comment, and I will see you in the comments section. Shalom.